Hello and welcome to Showcase, Terror to World's flagship arts and culture program, coming to you from our studios in Istanbul. Coming up on the show, we'll head to China's Anlong County, where cutting-edge architecture collides with art, and speak to a couple of experts about how museums are moving into the modern age. But first... <laughs> Classic Sounds by the Bosphorus. The Istanbul Music Festival is back in town with its 46th edition. And a step back in time. Our very own Miranda Adi takes a journey through the Turkish and Islamic Arts Museum here in Istanbul. Once the Palace of Ibrahim Pasha, Istanbul Museum of Turkish and Islamic Art, is one of the only private Ottoman mansions to have withstood the test of time. Located on its upper floors are galleries that feature religious artifacts dating back to the 8th century, including the Damascus Papers and Quran verses from various Middle East dynasties. We sent Miranda Adi to check out these stunning pieces of history. What better location for an Islamic museum than Sultan Ahmet, the heart of Istanbul's historic old town? So we're about to enter the palace of Ibrahim Pasha. Since it was built in the 16th century, it's been an army barracks, it's been a prison, and now it's a museum of Turkish and Islamic art. The collection was set up towards the end of the 19th century to protect artefacts being robbed from historic buildings and mosques. There are many relics from olden times, including the Seljuks, the Mamluks, the Safavids and of course the Ottoman era. The museums had more than one home. For years, it was housed in a soup kitchen inside the Blue Mosque complex. But in 1983, the collection was moved to Ibrahim Pasha's palace. There are many stories about Ibrahim Pasha, the first Grand Vizier of the Ottoman era, appointed in 1523 by Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent. Enslaved in his youth, Pasha formed a strong bond with the Sultan when they were both young. He soon gained huge influence, both as a military leader and as a diplomat working for the Sultan. But, as legend has it, their close friendship infuriated the Sultan's wife, Hurem. She's thought to have plotted against Pasha, which eventually led to his execution in 1536. His palace has a garden and many original features. And there's more than enough room for the flying carpet collection. This door, dating back to 1955, was rescued from the Great Mosque in Jizra. But it's the religious relics section that contains some of the rarest pieces. So there's actually something really amazing in here. This, in this little circle, is fragments of the Prophet Muhammad's beard. He allowed his beard to be distributed among Muslims when he shaved it off while he was still alive. It's not just hair, there are his footprints too. And of course, Qurans and manuscripts, both large and small.
The museum's displays range from Islam's early years right up to the 20th century. So it's not just a visual feast of culture, but also a journey through time. Miranda Atti, TRT World, Istanbul. This past April, the city of Istanbul was in full film festival mode and people here are already gearing up for the jazz festival in June. But before that, fans of classical music are flocking to one of the city's oldest music celebrations as the 46th edition of the Istanbul Music Festival gets underway. The festival organized by the Istanbul Foundation for Culture and Arts features nearly 500 artists and 25 concerts across 17 venues. The theme of this year is Family Bonds. In tribute to generations of music lovers, the festival has brought together over the years. Well, the biggest classical music festival is underway here in Istanbul and is due to continue until the 12th of June. And joining me now to speak about what to expect in this year's edition is Efruz Chakurkaya. She's the assistant director of the Istanbul Music Festival. Thank you so much for being with me today, Efruz. Thank you. It's my now, pleasure. As we said earlier, uh, the theme of this year's festival is family bonds. How did the organizers come up with this idea? Well, uh, since 2012, we are creating the festival program on a theme which allows uh, to uh, enrich the festival program uh, in a larger scale, uh, in a more colorful way, let's say. Uh, as you may have seen on the program, we have uh, many uh, musicians coming from the same family, mm -hmm. fathers, uh, daughters, sons, husbands and wives. Uh, so at this point, uh, we started thinking uh, about this relationship between music and family. So, um, you know, family is the most important thing of a person's life. Well, the Istanbul Music Festival has been ongoing for more than 40 years now. Um, and it's based on only classical music. Why aren't other genres incorporated into the festival? Well, at the very beginning in 1973, it was uh, started with many disciplines, actually. Uh, Istanbul Foundation for Culture and Arts were, was founded and Istanbul uh, Festival started and it included uh, theater projects, mm -hmm. theater productions, opera and ballet performances, film screenings, classical music and traditional music and everything. But uh, with the... Uh, uh, ongoing and augmenting uh, interest of the public, uh, we had several festivals separated, starting from 1983 with a film festival, then theatre festival, then jazz festival and mm -hmm. two biennials. So, uh, you know, it's much more colorful, colorful and uh, bigger uh, in this concept. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now, um, the festival kicked off with the opening concert yesterday. Yes. Uh, what should our viewers look out for? What would you recommend for our viewers? Well, we have many concerts. We have 25 concerts in 19 different venues uh, throughout the city. Uh, we have big scale orchestral concerts. We'll be hosting La Scala Filarmonica mm -hmm. uh, this Sunday evening uh, with the Russian pianist Daniel Trifonov. They're coming for, uh, for the last time. It was in 2019 when the orchestra was here. And we have uh, Boris and Istanbul Philharmonic Orchestra with Diana Damrau and Nicola Teste. We have Amsterdam Sinfonietta with Farzan and Farz Farhan Önder. Uh, they will be performing the uh, commission of this year's festival program. Uh, it's our commission to Dobrinka Tabakova. Mm -hmm. And we have the closing concert with English Chamber Orchestra and uh, our uh, beloved mm -hmm. uh, piano duo, Güher Suer Pekinal uh, yeah. Sisters. So uh, we also have recitals. Uh, There's many, many artists coming. <laughs> many artists yes. coming. All right, so uh, chamber music concerts yes. and uh, free of charge concerts as well. Wow, that's great. <laughs> um, now, tell me how this year's theme, Family Bonds, is reflected in the concerts. Yes, well, we have uh, many musicians coming from the same family, uh, be them um, sisters, daughters, uh, fathers, husband and wife. So uh, the basic idea was to emphasize the importance of the family 
and um, the, the creation of a character, a person's, uh, mm. a, an individual's uh, being uh, within the family. So we also have uh, this theme within the repertoire as well. Uh, like we have uh, Robert Schumann and his wife, Clara Schumann, uh, in the same exactly. concert program in Brahms, uh, who had a very close relationship between uh, Schumanns mm -hmm. and etc. So, uh, yes. It's a very intertwined a, Definitely. Festival. Yeah, with All our, right, our pre-concert lectures mm -hmm. as well. Uh, we're also uh, having uh, these pre-concert talks mm -hmm. uh, where we talk about the concert repertoires, multidisciplinary, the multidisciplinary uh, subjects mm -hmm. uh, as well. All right, if was, unfortunately I have to end it there, but thank you so much for coming on our show today. Thank you. <laughs> Still to come on Showcase, turning old junk into new art. From cars to cameras, we'll take you to a fair made up of all things recycled. But let's first take a look at how museums are redefining themselves to stay relevant in the digital age. Long seen as monuments housing treasures from the past, many museums these days are finding unique ways to remain relevant in the future. Istanbul's Akbank Arts Center celebrates International Museum Day with a series of seminars examining how museums can innovate and become incubators for the latest trends surfacing in the art world. This year's theme is Hyperconnected Museums, New Approaches, New Publics. It will focus on communication and applying new technologies within museums, as well as new methods and strategies to help improve people's understanding of how museums work. Panelists will explore how museums can make use of social media to better interact with the public and enhance the experiences of visitors. The Museum Studies Seminar is looking at ways to enhance and transform people's experiences when they visit museums. And joining me in our studio are Darko Babic, the chairperson of the International Council of Museums, and Hanzade Uralman, the project coordinator of the Museum Studies Seminar. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, now, the theme of this year's program is communication-oriented museums. How has the interaction between exhibitions and visitors changed over the years? Well, if we think about that, uh, interaction in between visitors and the objects existed all the time. Mm -hmm. But of course, with a more and more digital technologies, the interaction is changing. And the way how people do interact with the object and then with the representation of that object in media is very, very different. And of course, it's, it, it's not the same kind of the skills you had 25 years ago, how to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I want to move over to you, Hanzade. Now, the program is also dedicated to celebrate International Museum Day. Uh, and this year's theme is Hyperconnected Museums, New Approaches, New mm -hmm. Publics. It seems like there's a big effort to uh, focus more on the experience visitors are having in museums. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. Uh, museum experience how uh, people live in museum, how they visit, is very important. Museum communication is a very important and exciting issue uh, because uh, when uh, museums communicate, establish communication with their interior and exterior environments more, they will be uh, in the heart of cultural life, but mm. not only in the cultural life, also they will be in the heart of social life, and economy. This is important. So talking about museum communication is uh, very, very crucial in this point. It seems very crucial. Now, um, Darko, do you think museums are run like a business, given that 
a lot of them charge for entry fees. Well, uh, no. <laughs> and uh, well, I will say this way. First, the, the entrance fee, there is no museum in the world which is operated by entrance fee only, even not Louvre. Okay. Uh, so there is no way to, to do that connection. Uh, do museums supposed to be maybe more, to have on some parts business mindset? Yes, but not to become the business. Mm. Because they are, they are not, well, not business in a classical way. So some of museums, depends on parts of the world, supposed to maybe change some mindset to be more, you know, active and so on, but not to become the business for sure. And the entrance fee does not have any connection with that. Do you agree with him, Hansabi? <laughs> yeah, I, say, I agree with you. All right, now um, I want to move on to the seminars that uh, mm -hmm. are going to be mm -hmm. taking place. And social media plays a huge role in our mm -hmm. life, as we all know. We mm -hmm. spend a lot of time on it. Mm -hmm. um, and there's one seminar that's titled Being a Museum uh, in Social Media. And I assume this, in this session, they'll speak about uh, how to use social media as a tool to keep, uh, to keep interests in museums high. Uh, is that correct? Is that what the seminar explains? Uh, actually, social media is one of the sessions in our uh, seminars. And it's an important, again, issue. Um, having social media is not enough for museums. You should know how to use it as all companies for your mission as a museum. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will talk about uh, it, do's and don'ts, mm -hmm. in our uh, seminar, in this session, about uh, especially focusing on me uh, social media. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, and, and I, I will add that, of course, what you ask, it's true. And it's the way how to you know, reach new audience and stay in touch with your you know, existing audience, but in a new way. Mm. So in a, in, a, in a social media, for example, you, you can easily do co-curating co or that participatory, participatory approach we insist today that people want to be connected, but not just connected, they want to be part of that. Mm -hmm. They would like to co-create what, you, what mm -hmm. you are doing at mm -hmm. museum. Mm -hmm. And that's what you can really easy, if you know how, do over social media. So how exactly uh, are you guys using social media to to create that interaction? Uh, well, if that's a question for us, we are working at university, both, both of us. <laughs> Personally, <laughs> so, <laughs> so we, we could explain how university use or not use uh, in, in, in our case. Well, uh, in a way that, of course, as I said uh, before, it's not just communication channel, how you will inform your audience, but it's a way how you interact, how you actually, maybe somebody from Argentina is will never ever come to your museum, mm -hmm. but over social media, it could be your visitor. Yeah, yeah. that's the biggest factor, I guess. Well, one off, one but of very important. The very yeah. big factors. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Darko and Hanzade, thank you so much for joining us today on Showcase. Thank Welcome, you. thank you. You're welcome. Around the world, using recycled objects, creating sustainable fashions, and building eco-friendly designs are issues that have come to the foreground in recent years. And the same ethos applies to the art world. And while it's not easy to transform everyday objects into something beautiful, artists exhibiting at the Beverly Hills Art Show are doing just that. Chandeliers and sculptures fashioned out of old wires, cables and string. Alongside unwanted records, CDs and VHS tapes reclaimed from landfills. The Beverly Hills Art Show is where conventional art meets the unconventional. 
This is the City of Beverly Hills' largest special event. It takes place along four linear blocks in Beverly Hills. It's a historic 100-year-old park, and it's the oldest monument in the City of Beverly Hills. Um, we attract artists from around the country. We attract visitors from around the world. The twice yearly event brings together up to 250 artists from across the U.S. Beverly Hills is very committed to public art. It's actually committed to art and culture uh, in all of its forms. But this is an opportunity for us to actually showcase new artists and different emerging kinds of art. Paintings, ceramics and sculptures are only some of the kinds of artwork on display. Works by mixed media artists also reflect creativity through the simplest objects. I'm in theater, so I will buy an antique frame and cut it in half and make it look like a proscenium arch. I build a stage house and I hang things just like we do in theater. So I hang little uh, uh, prints by the artist, I may sculpt the artist, uh, sayings by the artist, so the whole little world is a shrine to one single artist, like Klimt or Picasso or Magritte. So next time you see trash, don't dwell too much on what it is, imagine rather what it could be. That's it for this latest episode of Showcase. You can head to our YouTube channel for more of our coverage of the global art scene. But before we leave, let's pay a visit to Southwest China, where an art gallery is attracting worldwide attention. Not just for what's inside its walls, but for the actual walls themselves. Nicknamed the Floating Museum, it's considered a piece of art in and of itself. I'm Efnan Han. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. In such a magnificent environment, nature should come before architecture. It reflects the concept that our country has been promoting. Be green and environmentally friendly. Finally, when I stood here, I was very excited. I think this might be a kind of happiness for our era. It gives architects such an opportunity.